Hi, it's Charlie Seymour, Jr., and I'm here for a very special interview. I'm here at Smile Center Dental in Burlington, Ontario, and I'm here with Dr. Long Vo and Dr. Julie Dow, who are partners here in Smile Center Dental. They're also partners in life and have two children. We're going to learn a lot about them here, so thank you very much for taking some time here in your brand new office. It looks terrific. So let's go back a little bit. Um, when we first met, and we've known each other for a little while now, we got to know about your family history. Why don't you give us a little bit of your family history, because we're going to do some family history. We're going to learn about the practice, their dreams for it, what they're doing, and we're going to go all the way to the end and learn a little bit more about how they're getting the message out. So a little bit about you and the family history that we have come um, to know. Okay, so my uh, mother is a dentist. Um, her father was a dentist, uh, and my, my uncle's a, a dentist, uh, my brother's a dentist. We, we come from a... Your wife is a dentist, so we've got three generations, yes. but several yes. when we go here in some generations. Um, so um, we immigrated from Vietnam in 1979. Uh, back then it was uh, uh, run by the, uh, the communists. Communists had yes. taken over. Yes. You were fleeing the country, Yes. right? Um, Landed in prison. Yes, uh, and uh, I was only three years old. I don't remember much from that. Um, and uh, in 1979, we had uh, we were fortunate enough to be sponsored by a Canadian, a French Canadian family. So when you say sponsored, that is inviting you to come over, and they yes. helped you yes. come over here to Canada. Yes. Okay. And uh, we we lived with them, and then um, uh, my mother uh, had to start over, and uh, she basically went to school from scratch and and um, got her degree uh, in Canada. So her dad was a dentist, right? Yes. And mom, I love the story that you tell about mom, how when she would play dolls, what would she do? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, she, uh, because she likes to imitate her, her father, uh, she would, um, you know, back then they're, they're not, they have no money, right? So kids just use their imagination and she would uh, have many dolls and uh, play dentist. And she would um, use uh, colors to pretend they're cavities and then she would fill them. Um, and then she had like a, you know, a few couple of dolls, and then she would give them names. And uh, oh, okay, now it's your turn to come in. Oh, you have a bad cavity. You're you're a bad doll. <laughs> the next one would be good. And then he, he gets a treat. And uh, she didn't start drilling on any of the neighborhood children no. uh, at that point. Okay, yeah, just you, you never know. It, it's it's really interesting. So there we were, um, fleeing Vietnam, yes. sponsored to come over here. You're following in the footsteps, because we kind of learn from people who are around us, to become a dentist. Yes. Tell me where you went to dental school. Uh, University of uh, Montreal. Of Montreal. Yes. And who did we meet at the University of Montreal? Uh, yes, uh, my wife, uh, Dr. Julie Dow. Yes, okay. So, love at first sight, we saw each other here? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to tell a different story, but let, let, how did we get to meet? What, did we take a lot of classes together? What? Uh, tell me about that. Um, Yes and no. Like I guess the way the, the classes were arranged, we actually didn't see much of each other because his last name being a bowl and me being a Dow, um, but medically we were in this different spot. Yes. Um, so I mean we knew each other. He was a good friend of my cousin who was in the same class as With well. With the last, the same last name. Same last name. Oh, okay. And, and he would sit close to my cousin and uh, one of my, my good friends. Um, in the class, so I would see him, but um, didn't quite get along back then. <laughs> didn't quite get along back then, but things have changed since then. In, in dental school, are there certain specialties, are there certain classes that you really liked that you both were taking, or that maybe at different times? No, no it's we just were more... just completely into different things, we had different interests, I had different interests. Um, so, you know, we see each other once in a while, at, you know, student parties, but other than that, um, I knew he existed, but... That was I'm going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Somehow they got connected here. Go, go a little further, though. So how did we finally get to... Uh... Um, it's after, actually after graduating. He, huh? um, he moved back to Toronto um, because his mom practiced in, in Toronto. And um, I, um, I, I moved to Toronto um, because I, I did a residency at Mount Sinai Hospital. Oh, okay. And um, somehow um, he was he used to work downtown, so um, we got together again, and you know, 
classmate from school. Did I so. see like, she, this <laughs> lovely young woman before? And then I actually got to know him. Yes. Uh, because then the school was busy. I mean, it was intense right. years of studying. Um, so we actually had you know, time to get to know each other. So to know him is to love him. Sorry, <laughs> the fellow she was taking me there. I'm not exactly sure. So then we started to, to go out. And did, did you start talking at a time like that? Clearly you were talking about you know, getting married and having children. You have two delightful children as we're recording this. Uh, did you start talking about a partnership in dentistry at that point? Did you see no. the vision that you have now? Um, well, I guess back then was a difficult time for me. My, my parents were going through a divorce and we would, uh, I, I just needed someone to talk to and then um, so we, we just stayed up until like 5 a.m. To, to talk about the, over the phone mm -hmm. uh, and um, you know I I, um, I thought I had a, a chip on my shoulder or something there was something wrong with me because you know I come from a broken family and I, and I would ask her you know would you ever uh, marry somebody who came from a, or a divorced family or had family issues and she didn't know anything about that so I just try, try to probe and, and, and see if, if um, she would accept me I guess because yes. that was my vision I wanted a, a family and I'm, I'm a family guy and um, I, I like kids I, I just wanted a partner who would understand that so um, let me ask you in these long phone conversations Vietnamese French or English 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 English, English. English. okay <laughs> you'll see them with the kids <laughs> Talking for all three languages in mid sentence, they will change our. Anyway, I'm jumping the gun here. So, okay, so you needed someone to talk to, got to know each other. When did you start to think about having a business partnership together? That would be after we got married. Um, and I guess it was just something that just came naturally. Because um, you were both working for someone else. Yes. In dental well, practice. I, I was working at my mother's practice and I took over her practice. Okay. Uh, she was uh, working for somebody else. I was working for somebody else and it was just a natural progression. Then I started working with him part time. Um, then I got pregnant and then I wanted to focus on the family and then slowly started to go back to working. But it was just a natural progression. Right. Um, like we both knew that, um, I mean, you know. Family is important to us. Yes. Um, but also because we're within the same profession, um, we can rely on each other um, and support each other. In, you know, into you understand the pressures. Yourself. You know what's going on. <laughs> and clearly, I, I guess for you, um, if you have a problem at work, it's not a difficulty for you to take it home and share. You're you're yes, able to. You yes. don't need to get yeah. away from all those. Sharing them works well it's for you. It's not as good as bad, though. It has okay. <laughs> it, it has it has both but I think, sides. You know, we've got we've got the right balance. It's definitely um, it's definitely nice to have someone that wouldn't set the pressure of work and the stress that we go through. Um, because I can tell him, oh, I've gone through a bad day, a stressful day, and he he can, he can relate to that. He can, he can relate. relate to that. Yes. So you have two children, and I know in your practice, one of the things that's really important to you is working with children. Tell me a little bit about your daughter and what you've been able to do here with the appliance and what then that has allowed you to do to take it out to other people as well. Because she had overbite? Uh, an underbite. Underbite. Where her, um, her uh, upper teeth were behind the lower teeth. So okay. that the lower teeth were covering the upper teeth. So when she's smiling, we see the, the lower teeth yes. before. And okay. that's the opposite of what it's supposed to be. Okay. So I have concerns and... Um, my philosophy is to treat her early. I, I don't want things to um, become permanent. And, and as I know, having gotten to know you, when the bone is soft, you're able to do more things there. So let's not let them get to become adults and then have to rip teeth out and to put braces that really stretch. Yes. So we can mold that bone differently, yes. right? And that's what you started with your yes. daughter. So as even still under three years old, uh, she's actually four now. She's four now. Well, she was starting there. Yes. yes. Okay. She started at four. Her appliance. Uh, she started at three. At three appliance. With her appliance. So, so she brushes her teeth. She can put this in, which just helps mold that bone a little bit more every day. So this is an easy thing for her to do now. Now that she knows yes. how to do this. She, she enjoys it. And okay. She'll scold us if we forget to. Uh, for her what will she say? Oh, she'll say, "Mommy, my appliance, my appliance." Gotta put that in. Here it is. I, I need to do this. So. You then now learn, I don't want to say you're experimenting with your children, but you're at least practicing yes. 
you're preaching then the same thing that you oh, yeah, feel yeah. is important to do. This is not something you're just going to do with somebody else's child. You yeah. live this now, yes. right? Yes. Okay. So, what would you say are some of the main things that you want out of your practice? If you could do anything that you wanted to, and you can, with your dental practice, what are the things you want to focus on? Um, do you want to focus on delivering, you know, um, the best dental care um, to family? To I families. Think this is what we're about. Um, you know, we consider dentistry um, to be healthcare profession first. And this is what we enjoy doing. Yes. From a 10 years of practice, um, you know, we, we, we ex experience different things, we, we try different things, um, but this is what we enjoy doing. And having our children and seeing um, the needs in dental care for you know, young children up until they're older, um, this is what we want to focus on, and this is what we enjoy doing as well. So preve early prevention all the way through those stages of the children who are then learning to do things correctly and preventing problems so that we're not then drilling and having to fill, uh, we will prevent those yes. from happening. It's, it's one thing when you learn it from dental school, you have to do this, you should do that. Um, when you have your children, you always want, as a parent, it's, it's a totally different perspective. Um, we want the best for them. We, want see, we don't want to see anything happen to them. Um, and I mean, um, those cases of underbite over it, we've seen it before. Yes. And, um, but seeing our daughter um, growing up with a jaw like this, it was like a different emotion. It's like, no, I don't, I don't want her to grow up and having this problem and not being able to eat properly or her profile being changed because of that. Um, so I think, you know, when we, we had a family, it would just it changed everything. Like it's a different perspective that we, we have now. Tell me a little bit more about your vision for what you want to do in your office. You have a boat in your office. You've got rubber duckies in your... Oh, we'll get to those a little later. But tell me more about children and your vision and how you want this office really to work for them. We hear children in the background. Tell us more about children. Uh, because we're, we're family people and... Um, Everything we do is, is for our children, and sometimes we, we go to places, restaurants, and all that, and our, our kids are noisy, and then it's like we feel like, you know, are we bothering these people, right? So uh, we simply want to create an experience where people can bring their family in, and um, that's what the goal is there for the kids to, to have fun, and uh, just like our kids would. Um, so we want to make sure they're comfortable and they're not uh, feeling like they, they should control their kids and yes. not bother other people, right? right? So they can just feel like, you know, come in, the boat is there for you to have fun. Welcome the um, kids. Yeah, and then that, that way the kids have a good experience, the adults have a good experience. Um, we want everyone to feel welcome. And this is, you know, um, how we design the office as well. Um, we, want, we don't want any barrier for okay. people to be comfortable so yes. that we can focus on the dentistry and making sure that they receive the treatment that they should and not be afraid or be stressed about coming here so they can take care of themselves as well. And then mom knows that the kids are safe. If they're in the boat, mom's enjoying here by the fireplace, whatever, right? Yes. Now there are no flames here that really come out through this, right? We, this is all protected. So there's no problem. But it's all kid friendly and it's open and there's glass where they can see through where perhaps there would have been barriers they couldn't see. So you've designed it quite well that way. We definitely want to open concept. So also, you know, we don't want people to feel that, um, you know, feel confined in a small space. I mean, you know, most of the kids already they come for dental checkup and everything's a bit different. Yep. So um, that's what we were going for. We definitely want everyone to be comfortable and, you know, dentistry can be fun as well. Yes, it looks like you've made it very comfortable here as well too. So the office is, is basically an extension of who we are how we like to, we want to be happy coming to work as well. Yep. Uh, so we've designed it so that we're, we're comfortable um, and we want our patients to, to feel that. Very nice. You even have come up with a brand new program. It's kind of a groundbreaking program. And the first section, I only want to focus on that first section right now, is your two by four 
early prevention dental health program where you're focusing on kids from before they're born until two years old. That's that first stage, right? And so we're talking about the first, the, the second trimester. Then we're talking about the age of two months of the child. Is that right? Then it's two teeth and then it's two years. Why don't you just take us through that for just a moment so you can see how concerned they are making sure that young families and young children in particular are really taken care of because this program is for the mother as well as for the child. Yes. It's perhaps more for the parents than for the child because at that age, uh, the child is, is so young, there's not much you can do. Uh, so really, prevention comes from the, the knowledge. So if you know and uh, you understand, and, and we, we sort of uh, give, um, like, uh, you know, in the crystal ball, we yes. give them the, you know, the, the future, let them see the future of if things are not done correctly, what can happen. Uh, and that's the point of uh, prevention. Uh, people never appreciate what they prevent because it never happens. Yes. So they may think, well, prevention is boring. It's it's not interesting. It's hard. It's difficult. I, I don't want to. I don't want to do this. I don't feel like it. But if they understood the future, and um, we can show them that if we don't do things right today, we don't put the effort, the time, you know, the sweat, and, the, and um, all the energy uh, to prevent, then. And it doesn't have to be so difficult. Right, it's easier. You, yeah, right, that it's much way. easier if you, you if you have the right tools and um, you know you have the proper information um, and you start early on. It doesn't have to be stressful. It doesn't have to be difficult. It's just some things that you acquire and you you know you, it's a good habit that you take on, and it would just it can just prevent so many problems down the road. Well, it's always amazing to me to hear people talking and that they've been eating themselves silly for 50 or 60 years when they wonder why they have a heart condition, right? Yeah. But you've made this program so easy for the mom to remember and easy for the mom to bring the child in here that just that little bit of prevention, a little bit of prevention, pound of cure, people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to have their heart put back into shape, and it's a terrible shape at that point, after heart attacks. But if they'd just taken a little bit of effort all along, it wouldn't be the problem. And that's what you're doing here yes. in the dental. And of course, you combine the dental and the full health because you look at it beyond oh, just. Yes, yes. It's all connected. Um, we, we cannot ignore. Uh, if you, you're uh, conscious about your health, you want to be healthy, you cannot ignore your teeth and, and vice versa. Uh, and the reason why we came up with that program is that if, if you were to ask anybody who's going through a certain condition, for example, they're in pain. You ask them if you had known a year ago that if you did this little thing, would you have done it? And, yeah. and most of the time they would say, absolutely, yes. but now it's after the fact. So we're trying to go backwards and, and reverse it and saying that, so now we should do this and this is the future. Therefore, they, they can have a, uh, an idea of what's going on and they can make a better decision for themselves. So an analogy, before I go on a long trip, if I get my brakes checked, it's a lot better than having gone on that same trip, hitting an icy patch, having no brakes, right, right? Yes. at that point. So it's been totaled the car and a huge expense, and I may be injured, but yes. you're taking care of it. And I, and I really appreciate what you're doing with that. So what are you doing now to take that message out? You have a very different website. You have a yes. very different practice. You're thinking differently from yes. a lot of people. What are some of the things you're doing to take this out to tell people? Well, um, I think the internet is a very powerful tool. Uh, even though um, this program, we, we can call it a community program, it's actually a global program. Yes. And anybody has access because with, with the internet, that information is free for everybody. So all the information you're yes. going to put together here to help these yes, moms and children free. is yes. going to be free and out there to everybody yes. to be able to have So that. whether you're in, in North America or in Asia, South America, any continent, um, you can have access. You're thinking big there, uh, Dr. Wong. Uh, well, good. because it's, 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 a, it's, it's an epidemic almost. Uh, yes. Like in North America, um, the childhood uh, decay is, is the, the biggest chronic infection for kids. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. And uh, economically, for a whole country to waste money uh, fixing things versus spend much less money to prevent it, I think it, it doesn't just affect the, the kids, but the kids are the future. And that way it can make any country much stronger and uh, 
we can spend our money elsewhere to, yes. to invest in our, our future, the kids, right. instead of uh, spending on repairing things that, that can re be repaired with floss and, and a toothbrush. Now we're spending a lot on, on health um, to repair major things, uh, sedation, that, that costs a lot of money for, for a country. So here you are putting all this good information together using the internet. We know that from our studies that 97% of people now search the internet before they go to somebody on a local basis for a local business. So they're going to go search the internet. You've got terrific information out there. Now I would be remiss, I could not close this interview if I didn't bring out one of our good friends and I know you two have them behind you as well. So Rubber Ducky is one of the things that's there on your website already. We have a terrific, we have a couple terrific videos that are there already that I've seen. Um, and this is just a fun thing for the children to latch on to. Yes. Uh, you talk about sugar bugs and going in and getting rid of the sugar bugs and we know that the ducks want to eat the sugar bugs and get rid of them. So it's just a visual way for the children to take home. I saw you with a teenager who was holding it during the whole procedure that she had. They're just sweet little things. I, I think it's terrific. How did you first come up with the idea of even putting rubber duckies into one of the videos? Well, everybody loves rubber duckies. I think it's, it's a timeless symbol of youth, of uh, babies, of, of uh, bathing babies. We always, everybody knows rubber duckies in, in the bathtub. So um, when we had our firstborn, we were young parents really excited about, uh, about all this stuff. And, um, I had the crazy idea that, you know what, let's, let's make a, a fun video um, with, with our child and uh, we'll, we called it the March of the Rubber Duckies. March of the Rubber Duckies. And, and, and we had music and, and, and duckies were just going somewhere and I was like, where are they going? And in the end, they, they ended up in the bathtub with my son. Right. So that, that was just for fun. Well, they've been very important in my own family too, so I, I appreciated it from the moment that I saw it and then a, that video has been used in part in a couple other ones because they do tell a wonderful story and it's something to remember here. Yes, it's smile, center, dental, but we also the, the rubber ducky plants. I mean, it's yes. really for kids and you just show your love for kids. So I, I appreciate that. I think, I hope that any time you see a rubber ducky, you think of smile, center, dental, you think of Dr. Long Vo, Dr. Julie Dow, what they have here in their partnership together as man and wife as well as here in the practice and that you will think of Smile Center Dental in Burlington, Ontario.